let's talk about your new project. Mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's, it's cool, man. It's a very personal album. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, um, you know, when people think of Big Sean, they think of, you know, features, a lot of this stuff, a lot of that stuff. And I always do try and prove myself on features whenever I'm, you know, next to a, a, um, another artist next to another rapper and it's time to showcase that you can rap, I'm gonna be on that track rapping, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna make sure I always have a standout verse. But for the album, I ain't wanted to be, I wanted it to be like, of course I'm on there spitting and it's very good raps, but I'm not an artist to make music to always prove myself. I'm an artist to express myself first and foremost, feel me? So this is like, it's kind of a new approach for me, um, for Big Sean on Hall of Fame because I'm making songs that really hit home, not just for me, but are gonna hit home for a lot of people and they're gonna be able to relate to them in their own way. You know what I'm saying? From different types of like, you know, songs like Beware, songs like Ashley, but then you got songs like Fire, you know, just about making it through your own fire, making it through triumphs, about how it's never too late. Or, you know, me talking about riding to school with my dad. You know, I would say, um, my dad used to drive me to school, um, tell me about the crazy girls, all about his past. Gave me the talks that made me to a man. Not everybody got a dad, but they got an Uncle Sam. He ain't come around till I made a hundred grand. You know, just like telling her about how my grandma said, grandma said when she saw my commercial, stop having people at your shows that wasn't at rehearsal. I, I, you know I was gonna bring up that quote because I that was one that stood out last night. Really? When, uh, yeah, and I was you. like, that was, that was deep. Yeah, man, and it's just like, I wanted, I wanted it to be more so about that. I wanted it to be more so about songs that meant something to me and that go greater than like showing that I could just rap or showing that. So, you know, I wanted it to be that. I feel like Hall of Fame, this album is gonna be a piece to a big puzzle, you know, for myself as an artist. It's not the puzzle, but it's definitely a major piece and I'm super excited about it. Do you feel like you're under like a lot of pressure? Um, I feel like it's pressure there, but you know, pressure make diamonds, man. And it's like, if people don't like the album, people don't like it. You know, I, I can't convince them to, if they don't like me, they only, you don't like me. But you know, over the years, I'm gonna just keep doing the best I can do and keep repping my city. You know, it's definitely, um, there's nobody from the city, it's, it's no young black man from the city who has a platform to be heard. So that was one of the main responsibilities. I also felt like I had to, you know, rep for a whole a whole place. You know, Detroit, I rep for, of course I rep for people, you know, I rep for anybody around the whole world, but coming from my city, you know, I wanted to touch on, um, like on First Chain, I was talking about how the police only work 12 hour shifts, because in Detroit that's cheaper than a bailout bitch. Like they had shortened the hours of the policemen working around the city. So it was crazy shit going on. People were getting like, it was people, you know, gunshots would be going off, people would get murdered and police wouldn't be there. Wow. Because they had shortened the hours because before Detroit was, um, you know, before they filed for bankruptcy, they were trying to avoid it and taking cuts everywhere and everything. So it was just, it was a crazy moment. It's really pandemonium and you hear about it on CNN, but half the people I know don't watch CNN. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I wanted to make sure that I gave them something to live to, something to be, um, you know, re relatable to and to like express to the world, like, yo, this is what's going on in our place. So, you know, it's definitely songs on there that represent that too. And, um, yeah. I wanted to talk about First Chain because mm -hmm. like, I'm kind of sheltered. So I, uh -huh. I don't know like how people look at chains and you uh -huh. compared it to like the first time you had sex and, <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Well, this yeah. chain thing, can you tell me like... Well yeah, the thing was, so the chains, it's like, um, the chain, that, like that's, that for me, getting my first chain was, you know, it was a crazy time, Kanye, when he gave me my first chain. I, I talk about how, you know, born to be a rapper, that's all you, that's one of the main things you want. And I talk about how big was the first one that had it. I saw a Nas chain, that was Illmatic. I saw Kanye's hanging from his gold necklace, and Ye gave me mine, that show you my work ethic. You know, and it's like, um, I touch on like my mom picking me up from school and she used to pick me up in a hoopty and I used to be so embarrassed like damn it you know you in this in this car to me buying her the car she wanted to buying that caddy you know what I'm saying to and um you know in an inspirational sense it's not just like about song about chains it's like a song about surrounding 
those times and Nas tells his perspectives, you know what I'm saying, about how when he was growing up in the projects, how he used to see, you know, Doughboys with Cuban links and he talked about how he wanted his perfect, you know, not too short, not too wide, not too long. What is it, like a status symbol? Like yeah, yeah. Because it's, even well, Jay, he's been wearing the biggest, massive, stupid, uh, craziest change you can ever that's just find. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so maybe he's like, okay, like my change is bigger than yours and, yeah. and I'm up here. But for know. us, for you know, for us it's a chain, but it's, it can relate to just that piece of shine that you always had to wear. Like I know when I played it for J. Cole in the studio and he heard it, he was like, man, that took me back to like when I was in high school. And he was like, yo, I always had to wear this watch, man. And that's like, yeah, you know, whether it's a watch or some piece of your earrings you always had to wear, you felt kind of like, damn, I'm not shining right now, you know? And um, he was like, man, I got that watch. I paid 200 for it. It had like glass stones in it. He was like, if I would have sneezed too hard, it would have broke, but I always had to wear it, you know? So that's just what it's about. That's the first chain. Why do you wear your uh, chain tucked? Or why do people wear their chains tucked? Um, I just wear it tucked because I just like the gold. You know, you can just see the la layering of the gold on my neck. It don't always have to be out. And I don't always wear it tucked, but I think it looked better with this shirt. You know, if yeah, I, had, like, I just wondered. I didn't know yeah. what. I didn't know if it was because people were scared to get them snatched. Oh, like hell I always see no. Kanye wear <laughs> a chain tucked and Jay. <laughs> I'm no. telling you, I'm, I'm learning a little bit about no. this chain culture no, thing. No, 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 I'm from Detroit, so <laughs> we the ones who snatch the chains, you know? Oh, okay. I just wear them for like, I think sometimes it looks better just to have them tucked so you can see you have them on. You know, there's no point in having them and tucking them. Like, if you were scared of getting them snatched, I just, I wouldn't wear them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they can't, not like nobody can't snatch it through a shirt. If you want the chain, you're going to get the chain, you know what I'm saying? But ain't nobody snatching chains. I just think it looks cool having that gold there.